But a question I got earlier today was, uh, uh, you know, one of those questions, those thoughts that you have, the clear person is clearly up all night thinking and stressed out, and they're talking about, the, you know, the depression in the world, and how do I deal with it all, and, uh, you know, stay so positive in vids and stuff like that. And uh, uh, I think sometimes you forget in life that being happiness is a process, you know, and it just seems like sometimes that happiness some kind of should kind of sometimes like happen to you, like you deserve to be happy, thus things in life that happen to you will make you happy. And you have to be a source for your own happiness. I always appreciate when you guys come to my vids to, to get a pick me up and have a good time. That's definitely what I enjoy doing with the community. That's why I spend so much time with the community. You know, it's a little tough for me right now because I'm focusing more on myself, the wedding and friends and family. We just had some great friends leave the house. We have barely been able to see them throughout this year because we've been working so much. You know, Skitten's working two jobs now. You know, I have to maintain my own happiness. You know, like those are the things that keep us sane. So that's what we do. So, you know, keep your head up out there, but don't be willing to switch things up if you're if you're not happy. You have to be willing to try new things and keep your head up on a, a positive horizon. Any who's in top 10 anime where the villain is more appreciated than the hero. Which they're showing us Hisoka, and if you watch Hunter x Hunter and you didn't like Gon or Killua and more than Hisoka, I can kind of see where you're coming from, but you're watching the anime for the wrong reasons. It's a very balanced anime, Hunter x Hunter. I can see why, I mean the fans for Hunter x Hunter, oh my god, like, Jesus Christ, uh, they, they're pretty fucking intense, and uh, I'm one of them, it's excellent. <laughs> Hunter is so good, bro. I was so mad. Y'all have been telling me to watch it, but then when I watched it, I was just so surprised at how good it was. Uh, I even got skidding all the way up to like the last season. Uh, it's not on Hulu, so you can't watch it, but uh, let's get into it, man. Play. Anime. Probably oh. one of the only media available that makes any character shine. Even though it's logical to root for the protagonist 99.9% .9 of the time, there are some anime out there that give the spotlight to their villains. Sure do. Deliciously devilish and eerily Ooh, evil. Oh, Vegeta. He's dubious and Which death. that's from when he was definitely still a good guy, but temporarily a bad guy. But we so feel ne'er do wells can just we as well you. overtake their series protagonist's popularity. Hello, clank, everyone, clank, and welcome clank. to Otaku Sensei's channel. And today, I'll be the one narrating this video. You can check out my channel, The Entertainment Regent, where I make all sorts of content on anime, gaming, movies, etc. Lit. I'll leave the link in the description box below. Lit. We'll be taking a look at the top 10 anime where the villains are more appreciated than the hero. And if we don't finish the video, the link is in the description down below. Wow. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. This shit! A classic! Starting with a classic! At number 10, we have Akira. We're going to be talking about the movie version of Akira, which arguably gives more focus on our villain than the titular hero. It's set in a post-apocalyptic Tokyo in, oddly enough, 2019, with the story of two Bro, he friends. picked like one of the most savage clips. That dude got lit the fuck Tetsuo up. Tetsuo and Shotaro. The story of Tetsuo is as classic as they come. A lot of anime fans love Tetsuo not just for his transformation, but for his attitude and relatability, always being outspoken on the way oh, he's God. being seen by those around him. Akira destroyed Tokyo and was given a side role, making Tetsuo tons more relatable. As Tetsuo develops abilities, we see his sanity start to take a downward spiral, turning heads of anime fans in awe as to what he has become. While MCU fans may be more familiar with the line, uh, I am Iron Man, diehard anime fans have their own version in, I am Tetsuo. That, that is absolutely not the scene that stood out for me from that. I mean, it was a good one, but it, it definitely isn't. But I feel you though. <laughs> Bro, what's good? <laughs> Moving on to number 9, it's Cowboy Bebop. Another anime classic makes her list, as we're also in the future to follow the adventures of bounty hunter Spike Spiegel as a protagonist against a vengeful old friend, Vicious. Power Ooh. corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think Lord Acton had Vicious on the mind when he came up with that quote decades before anime was even a thing, and rightly so. Vicious, as his name suggests, will let no one stand in his way in his quest to completely dominate the Red Dragon Syndicate. Having fought alongside the protagonist Spike Spiegel for so many years as part of the Syndicate, he has absolutely no remorse for anything with a soul, and his views on life and philosophy are eerily similar to Spike's. It's not just his power-hungry attitude or viciousness, pun absolutely intended, that make him a more interesting character, 
but the way his backstory is revealed throughout the anime as the story develops makes him out to be a truly compelling villain. Y'all, y'all really like him more than you like Spike? Word? Y'all exposing yourself like that on my channel? Who the hell agrees with that? Y'all, y'all really agree with that shit? I, I, no, I'm not. Normally, I get super upset. Okay, I'm gonna keep myself composed here. Y'all tell me why then? Cause Spike was that nigga. Tell me different. That, bro, give me. Where's my? Change my mind. You can't. You can't. Bro, who did we Let's get to number eight with a classic? Ooh. Dragon Ball Z. Bro, who? at this point, I think there's not a soul on this earth that does not know what Dragon Ball Z is, but it's my fucking fiance. Jesus Christ. Basically, <laughs> the story of Son Goku, an alien boy who grew up on Earth and has become so adept at martial arts, coupled with his tenacity, making him our planet's best defender against all attacks. Thank you for that bonus shot. I appreciate Vegeta. that. While he's not a villain now, let's go back to the Saiyan Saga. After beating Raditz, there was no way there would be someone stronger out there. Lo and behold, the prince of all Saiyans, Vegeta, descends upon Earth to finish with You're not a wrong. class warrior. He is not wrong. Vegeta was that dude. But That's not. real. Let me remind you that his crossed arms and scowl defined who he was. And we watched that video about it too that explained it in way better detail. Vegeta killed countless souls in the name of Frieza and numerous Namekians when he sought out their Dragon Balls to become immortal. Even with Goku's never say die and positive, I actually prefer Vegeta and even more so the villainous role of Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z. And I couldn't agree more. Vegeta is the true definition of badass. Bro, that pervy old man down here touching butts. We watched that whole video too. That shit was great. I seven, never seen Dang this dude. While not one Dang of the most popular Rampa, entries on the list, bro, that's Dang and Rampa is about crazy. the killing school life of Host Peak Academy, where students with special abilities like the Ultimate Otaku, for instance, are invited to be a part of the academy, only to discover that to graduate, you have to murder and get away with it after a trial. Our protagonist, Makoto huh. Nayagi, has to be that the one who solves the murders alongside the rest of the cat. Yo, that's what that show, yo, there's a game I was talking to some homies about. That's what this game is based off of. I want that game. Do I have to watch the anime before I play that game? I'm about to find out. I'm going to Google it after. You don't have to tell me that, all right? You don't have to answer that. But I'm he Google. has to ultimately face off against Junko Inoshima, who says only the boys get to be bad. Initially introduced as the ultimate fashionista of Host Peak Academy in the first entry in the Danganronpa series of games, the way her story played out to become the mastermind of the entire plot, not just for the but for the entire series, was mind-bafflingly good. You owe it to yourself to give Danganronpa a watch since the creators greenlit an anime adaptation of the first game. And number six, it's Code Geass. Taking a slice of alternate history, the world yeah, of Code Geass has three I watched, superpowers. I quite the a Britannian bit of this. Empire, the European Union, and the Chinese Federation. We follow the story of Lelouch, who is on a quest to battle the Britannian Empire from within against Suzuka Kururugi and his other siblings, but we'll choose to focus on those two for our list. Sometimes the best villains are those born into villainy, and there are no better ones than aristocrats. Lelouch definitely fits the bill of rich villain. One, he's the 11th prince of his empire. Two, he's as selfish as they come, and he always views things as trivial, including oh, his Lemon. education. Moreover, he's got some compassion to his loved ones, so he's not all bad. Comparatively, his half-brother Suzuka is against most of what Lelouch stands for. That's what I liked about it. About the whole chess and stuff, I really enjoyed that. I really did. That he can really make did. it better. That's why Lelouch is arguably much better than Suzuka, since he sees, as well as the audience, how futile it is to fight for a tyrannical empire. I am not watching any more JoJo, bro. I am not watching any more. I refuse. Mostly because that video got blocked. It's not actually personal. I wanted to make it seem as personal as possible before I flip past it, but it's not. It's just because it got blocked. Not sorry. At all. They blocked the fuck out that other anime video. They don't give a shit. Oh! And number four, we've got Full Metal Alchemist. 
Full Metal Alchemist follows the story of Edward Elric, who must embark on a Is journey to find the Philosopher's because Stone I love in order Scar. to restore his brother's body. Along his path, he is faced with the forces of Father and his homunculi, including one of their most ruthless soldiers, Envy. Out of all the homunculi, Envy has got to be the cruelest. Having the ability to shapeshift, they can become anyone they wish and exp- Bro, didn't nobody fuck with Envy more than the Elric brothers? Maybe if you're gonna pick a homunculus, you pick Lust, okay? Cause she was sassy, and that bitch, and she had a redemption arc, okay? Or you'd pick Scar, who was a bad guy. Clearly a bad guy that you fuck with. It's not Envy, bro. What are you doing? Is this like a fucking trigger video or something? You keep trying me. Both physically and emotionally. Go Compared to Edward Elric, get who's out all of about here. selflessness and loyalty, Envy embraces their evil nature wholeheartedly. Just because you can't write some shit does not mean you should write some shit. That sounds real good. It sounds great even. But if you watch the anime, you don't give two fucks about them. And that is absolutely terrifying. Anytime they're on screen, Envy immediately steals the scene and makes the audience feel the that, utmost discomfort. That is one personal ass opinion. <laughs> I couldn't give two fucks. That was, that Envy was fucking boring to me. Delighting themselves in human agony and suffering, there's no way you'll watch a scene with Envy in it without feeling your stomach squirm from fear. It was actually not that hard. Nah. Good take though. Good take. But to be number four, like even all of this to be number four, that's weak, bro. That's weak. Death Note, like you, that's the whole anime. That's one of the best anime ever created. So that feels like a fucking cop out. Watch that shit yourselves, because I also don't know if that music I can play. So we're gonna move on. Oh man, I never finished Monster actually. I I tried this. I never finished this. I forgot about this. On number two, it's Monster. Monster illustrates why you shouldn't mess with people's brains, literally. Protagonist Kenzo Tenma ends up creating a monster from one of his patients in Germany, how did, Johann Lee. How did this end? I don't the remember this. The man ends up becoming a cold and psychopathic serial killer, and that's how the story starts. Oh boy, the nightmares are starting to crawl back in. Ugh. Johann's face alone steals the cake from the protagonist, and you will never be able to shake his terrifying visage from your mind. Not only was he born extremely intelligent, one of his two sides is simply pure evil, and he will use his masterfulness at manipulation to the most extreme degree. In stark contrast to his creator, Liebert steals the spotlight because he has nothing but intensity written all over him, making him even better than the protagonist. <laughs> Finally, at number one, it's Hunter oh, by Hunter. Fucking. I don't think this entry needs any introduction, but for the uninitiated, Gon, our protagonist, follows in the footsteps of his hunter father Gone. in order to try and find him. Gone. Along his journey, he comes across our top pig villain, Hisoka. He's a good Hisoka though. can be your enemy one day, your ally on another. Yeah. While he himself good, isn't interested in his past, a series that explores his background a bit more, and the title's already perfect Hisoka by Hisoka. <laughs> You're right. a nice ring to it, eh? Gon is cool and all, but I don't think he can hold a candle to have most injuries, and he's a master strategist in every fight scene. And he's a pervert, so you know that gives a lot of a lot of good scenes. Uh you know, not wrong. I would watch a spin-off. Don't like him anymore than I like Gon and Killer though. I already said what I had to say. I'll see you later. <laughs>